Look at this dude. <laughs> yeah. Why are you pulling me? I'm right. Okie dokie, all they got you there. Don't most of the book who want me dead. Gun body, my son, I'm not net. Y'all talking, time to take away. You ain't clocking, I was on the day. All that watch is stopping what you claim. Dollar cross is real, got me net. Hoping God just get me out this way. Okay. Calm down, calm down. I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna say that without a shadow of a doubt, she's the best written character. I do think she's one of the best written characters, but that's up for discussion. I think there's a lot of really dope characters in uh, Tower of God. The answer is mutual love. But yeah, I'm joking, I'm joking. But I would argue that she's the best written antagonist and the most interesting one in the Tower. Calavan's cool, White's cool, there's a lot of great ones, but the thing about Rachel is, I think that Rachel is constantly the one pulling the narrative forward not that other characters haven't done that and don't do it but think about the very reason that we even have this story the narrative in the first place why are we in the tower because bam chased who here rachel then he was climbing to find who rachel then he met who rachel then he wanted to protect who rachel and then we got one of the most iconic scenes of my life the push top one webtoon betrayals i a decade ago when I first read this, maybe 11 years now, but around, around around a decade. When I read this and I saw that, I thought I missed something. I thought there was a chapter I didn't read or I couldn't, I just, I like didn't believe it. Because I didn't trust her and then I trusted her when she was like par paralyzed and then she did that and I was just like real life mad. Like outside in the world, school work, doing what I gotta do and I'm like, but why she push it? <laughs> like I, I couldn't believe what was going on. And even after that happens, when Bam is juvial Grace for a bit and he, you know, he's in season two. Now he's so concerned about finding Rachel to find out why she did that. Like, still, his number one motivation is tracking down Rachel. Like, that's what I'm saying by she's constantly pulling the narrative forward. And you have to understand that everything that Bam knows and learned for the most part like outside, like in the cave was taught to him by Rachel. So anytime she betrays the teachings of him, like, oh, you have to be kind to girls and things of that nature, this is Bam having to undo the teaching, if you want to call it brainwashing, that Rachel put onto him, imprinted onto him. She is driving this story. I always argue that Tower of God is not nearly as interesting without Rachel in it. I'm not gonna go as far as to say Tower of God's a bad story or not a good story without Rachel. But remove her and I don't think it's nearly as intriguing. I'm sorry. You may not believe that, but I do. One of the first Tower of God videos that I edited, like in full, was why Tower of God needs Rachel. And I still stand by that. Because Rachel's agency inside the narrative is so integral to the story because of the relationship that she has with especially Bam. But think about Aguero. Aguero does not like this bitch. He cannot stand her. <laughs> he hates her. Did you did you see how much he flexed on her in the dollar show? He he just wanted to rid, ridicule her. You're weak. You're dumb. You're ugly. Uh, he like he can't stand her, and she and she can't stand him. Tried to leave him to get um burned up by thing when Yuri came and saved him with that substance, and then what did she do in the hidden floor? When she was Icarus, she was manipulating everybody. No one knew she found one of the, is it the breeders, big breeders or bosses? I'll, I'll edit it here if I got the, got the name wrong. And then she came in as um, Icarus inside the hidden floor or like Simi calls it the sword art arcs. But, and then what did she do? She blew his heart up and now he was incapacitated for like two years. And that forced Bam to really have to, you know, all right. It's done, it's done, I can't, I can't be chasing you no more, I can't be doing this. And even after, like I said, as Juvial Grace, she he was still chasing to find out why he got pushed. Like, she's constantly making these guys, people do stuff. And Jirosi doesn't like her, think about all the characters that don't like her. And then, you have to consider how she does things in the tower. She does it in a very sly and underhanded and cunning fashion. This is not to say there's not other characters who don't do this, who don't try to get ahead by doing things that are sneaky, underhanded, and what and what have you. But it just rubs us as readers the the, the wrong way. Anytime Rachel succeeds in any shape or form, we're like, no, what, why? Like we're like, what? How? We don't we don't accept it. But this is by design. Like, if you don't like the character Rachel, 
That's because SIU did a good job writing her. You're not supposed to like her. He wrote her to be unlikable. That doesn't mean you can't or can't respect the character, but the fact of the matter is she was made to be someone that, as a reader or watcher, you don't like. So that's a good writing. I think she's I think she's incredibly handled within this narrative. Probably one of the best things, if not the best thing about the story and its writing and whatnot. I'm reminded of what she did to Dan and his legs. That hurt. It's just like, think of so many moments in Tower of God where you may have felt a type of way or upset. And I guarantee you, a lot of the times, or a high percentage of the times, Rachel is involved. Even the second push. Oh my, oh, that triggered me something different. Let me tell you, I, I said, bam, no. I was happy after the hidden floor, he did what he did. I still think she ended up winning that engagement because she basically held information that he wanted, that, she, that Bam wanted over his head. But that just goes to show you that she's kind of, she's just like, just, oh, Rachel, like, come on. Like, um, she has the three wishes from Gus Dang that she got. When we see her again, I know it's gonna be such an incredible moment. Like, I, I argue that if you make Rachel very powerful, you take away a lot of the things that make her interesting, especially like now. I could understand doing that towards the end game. So at the very least, she could compete with other with other characters in combat. But the fact that she's continuing to succeed and climb the tower, despite being pretty much whatless, not a great lighthouse bearer or none of that, is what makes it so fascinating and infuriating at the same time. You feel me? So... When we see Rachel again with the three wishes, first of all, if you got any theories on what the wishes are, I know, I think most of us agree that one of them is for her to be pretty because canonically within the story, I don't care how you feel about her. I know the anime had that little scene where she's like breathing hard and blushing and people thought she was cute. Canonically, Rachel is ugly. Even Batman said that as much as he, uh, um, early in season one, like not that she's, I don't, I don't think he's specific that she's ugly, but she's not like a looker or anything, not attractive like that. She's not a prince of the jihad or nothing, but I think when she comes back, she's going to drive the story in such a direction. We like, we don't even know. Like, 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 I feel like SIU has something so big and planned for, uh, planned for us. But ultimately at the end of the day, what do I think about Rachel? I think she is the best written antagonist. I think she's the most interesting antagonist. Is she the best written character though? I think that's up for debate, but I would argue top three, hundred uh, percent at, at worst at worst top five, you know, at five. But remember when I said that Rachel was holding information over Bam's head? She has some type of connection to Arlene and his literal lineage and how he was born and whatnot. Like that's gonna be such a crazy reveal. Should she should she uh, reveal that sooner rather than later? I feel like it'll be later. I don't think we're gonna get that anytime soon. But also recall that you could kind of argue that Rachel is scared, thinks Bam is some type of monster, and you remember? Do you remember some of those flashback scenes and stuff? Like, there's so much that we don't know about the character. You have, if you have any theories about what you think Rachel is really up to and why she's doing this, you feel free to tell me in the comments section below. But I don't want to ramble. I just want to kind of give my general thoughts on the t on the topic, and then we'll talk about it in the comment section and hash it out. Because man when rachel comes up boy does it get contentious every time it's just so she's just so polarizing like people i don't care the leader from the story we don't need her stupid whack and then you have rachel defenders and stands like what you do wrong rachel kind of kind of kind of kawaii like no no definitely not pretty that that i'll never ever ever agree with not even icarus not even icarus all right i'm out in my drugs, yeah. pour it in my cup, yeah. sitting in my darkness with my clothes, we pouring up, I don't really give a fuck, I don't really have a say, you tell me that I suck, I tell you get up out my face, you got tears in your eyes, looking like a fool.